Good morning friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 17th, 2023. Well, goodness sakes, we tried to get a little bit of selling going yesterday, but it really wouldn't take. And as I um, had suggested um, earlier this week that there was a really good chance um, that they would work really hard to keep this market up through the week it looks like that's the case and I'll show you why I think that is the case here in just a bit let's take a look at uh, what happened overnight well um, Asian markets um, had a little bit of a mixed um, result overnight with Hong Kong selling off pretty sharply as a result of the um, Alibaba um, earnings report and Shanghai was just barely up by $3.44, so kind of a mixed result. European markets this morning, however, are decidedly bullish. Bullish across the board this morning, looking pretty good, even though Volvo is down 10%. So um, quite a mix going on. And of course, here in uh, the US, we're looking at our futures trying to move higher. We just recently had the pre-market futures and NASDAQ dip just a little bit lower. We have oil this morning that's bouncing back up just a tiny little bit after yesterday's hard sell off. So what does all that mean for today? Well, Oh, by the way, bonds. Bonds are moving just ever so slightly down here this morning. We have the two-year bond at 4.82%. Ten-year is at 4.41%. So continuing to see that ease. So all of that, what does it mean? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again. Hope everyone is having a great Friday morning. Let's take a look at these charts, see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, looking right here, we continue to struggle against this resistance in the chart. And I do believe that um, we have a chance that we could push on through that here today. It's also possible we could end up with more of a pop and drop type pattern where we pop up in there and then just that little bit of uncertainty going into the weekend and folks um, kind of expecting a, a you know pullback to begin here at any time in the market may just ease up on things and um, try to take a little profit um, um, into the weekend. But if we take a look at it and the bulls find inspiration today, well, um, remember I had mentioned this area up here might be the next area if we can pop through here that we might move on up and attack that area of the chart. If the bears, however, find inspiration of the day, well, we created a little bit of spot in here yesterday where we came down uh, with that little spinning top doji in here, came down just a little bit, but I think um, it would be fairly easy to push this on down through here if the bears decided to get any kind of inspiration today. There's a little bit of price support in there. If that of course fails then I suggest maybe the the low of that candle uh, could be tested beyond that we're looking at this level of price support here in the chart now keeping in mind this trend is very very steep and we want to keep um, you know uh, in mind that possibility that we could um, end up um, in a longer term consolidation. And let me talk about that for a second. If you look back over here, when we fell pretty steeply, we ended up sticking around in this area for, you know, not quite a month, but about a month. It really wouldn't be that out of the question if we don't actually really pull back and sell off, then um, we get stuck here in a range for a little bit. Um, it doesn't have to be quite as wide as this one. Um, usually the volatility on the first part of that wave is pretty strong. 
but then we'll tighten up and just kind of rest in that pattern. And then we'll be looking for that next opportunity where that creates the new upside trend. Now, I'm not trying to predict that. I'm just um, pointing out that that could be a possibility because there was some conversation from folks um, about what I'll, what do I mean about um, a longer term consolidation. And so something in that range um, wouldn't be out of the question at all. I can't say that that's going to occur. But if we don't pull back in this market, we're probably due for more of a protracted consolidation. Looking at our SPY, SPY, moving on up here pretty strongly uh, this morning, trying to pop out. You can see we've got that resistance here in the chart um, that we're still dealing with, and they're trying to get through there. And the reason I think um, there is this possibility that we could blast through um, at least this morning is mostly for the NASDAQ, um, but we'll take a look at that here in a second. Um, SPY, as you can see, we've pushed up here, um, trying to break through this resistance. I think the next resistance is somewhere between that area and that area of the chart for the upside. And if they can keep going through that, well then of course we're up here testing um, uh, yearly highs in the SPY. If the bears can gain a little ground here um, on the day, maybe a push back down here where we tested yesterday, to uh, pick up a little bit of support right in there. And if that were to slip, then I think that possibility that we slip on down here, test the low side of that candle. And then of course, beyond that, we're right back down here into this price support area of the chart. If we take a look at our QQQ, this is one of the reasons why I believe they're gonna really try to hold the market and get something going here on Friday because they've come all of this way. We've, we've created this extremely parabolic move in the NASDAQ. They've come all this way and so far they haven't been able to make a new high for the year. And I could just see, you know, we, we've come all this way. They're going to do uh, everything they can to try to push us through there, even if they have to pump it up in the overnight market, which they've kind of done here on the diamonds, but it's really starting to slip here this morning already. So um, if, if there is a shot that the bulls find inspiration, I think that's where they would go is try to attack that breakout, uh, complete the um, uh, a new year high. After that, uh, pullback might be um, on the way. If the pullback were to occur today and the bulls don't find that inspiration to break out, then uh, maybe a pushback right down into here to retest that support. And if that were to fail, then of course, we don't have anything else in there but a pullback into this area and possibly even straight on down to fill that gap here in the chart. And it's one of the problems when we do these all or nothing moves in the market, we get so excited or so bearish all at once that we don't leave behind any support levels in the chart uh, for the price to grab a hold of in a pullback and that can make those pullbacks kind of painful um, overall. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM again it doesn't have the tech giants in it and it is it's been just lagging way behind the rest of the market. We had this big, nice push for a couple of days, put in quite a shooting star up here, and it, that kind of lays out. If the bulls continue to find inspiration here, you can see they're trying to pop here in the pre-market. If they can find that inspiration, maybe a test of this resistance, a break of that, and then right back up here, take another shot at that resistance in the chart. If the bears, however, come back in and find inspiration that I'd be looking for a retest right down into this area. Might hold on that black candle from yesterday, but a retest um, in that area. And if that fails, then we start dropping into this giant gap. The Russell, and by the way, that doesn't make anything bad if that were to occur because there is the trend and perhaps we're either going to rest or consolidate this out in this range, okay, out here to trend, or we pull it back into uh, the trend and then find uh, if we can find that support to bounce off. So pretty normal price action here in the market. Let's take a look at our 
um, VIX. Our VIX yesterday uh, popped up just a little bit, but we're still within the same range. Um, just kind of chopping around in here. If the if the bulls were to find inspiration now, maybe a push back down, um, test some of these support levels in the chart. Um, once again, if the bulls find uh, or if the bears find inspiration, then look for a test up here around that uh, 14, 15 handle area um, in the VIX. We've just kind of been bouncing around in there um, on this real extreme rally that we've had here in the market. Taking a look at our T2122, our T2122 pulled back nicely yesterday. Um, we had this impression that the market was extremely bullish again yesterday, but honestly, there were more stocks in decline than those rallying. And you can see that here in T2122. Remember, all this is, it's not a predictive tool and, and too many people get confused about this indicator that it, it's supposed to predict what the market is going to do today. And it doesn't do that. Um, it's just a ratio of stocks making new highs and new lows. So it gives you that really simple look at what's happening overall in the market. And we had more stocks pulling back than we had going higher yesterday. And that's really all this is. Now it did relieve the pressure from the bearish reversal zone up here. This is that zone when we get so overbought that um, we need a rest or pullback. And that's what occurred um, yesterday. Now, there was a comment yesterday and I wanna, uh, and it's a justified comment, I, I'm not criticizing anyone here, um, that when I talk about um, T2122, I am um, issuing a bias or sharing a bias on the market. And I'm going to disagree with that. And the reason is, is because when I say we're overbought, it's the T2122 indicator that is telling us that we're overbought. And we've never had a time in T2122 when we can go above 100. It, that's not the way a ratio works. It, it can't go above that area. And then we typically get some kind of a pullback. Now it doesn't have to be necessarily a major selling pullback. It can be more of a pullback of a little resting consolidation pullback in the market, but that is an overbought condition. This is an oversold condition. And um, that's all T2122 is really good for is showing us when we should be thinking about taking some profits, watching for that pullback to begin at any moment in time, which is what I said, um, because we're overbought, we should be looking for a pullback to occur at any moment in time. And um, we got a little bit of a resting pullback. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't bearish at all. So just kind of keep that in mind that when we push into these areas, those overbought oversold conditions are something T2122 is the master of. And I'm just um, pointing that out in the videos. Hopefully that was helpful. If you take a look at our uh, T2108, now T2108 percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, you can see got a little bit of pullback here yesterday. And I did mention when we start reaching up here in this mid 65 to mid 75 area of the chart, we tend to be very overbought in the market. And um, that's where we catch these pullbacks um, in that range. And they can be pretty substantial because the market overextends for a period of time. So I did mention that this uh, um, was creeping up into that area, but it wasn't bad yet. And we ended up pulling back um, in this chart, just found a little bit of price resistance in here, pulling back, easing some of that pressure at 56% uh, of the stocks above their 40 day moving average. Now pulling on back from there, we're likely to come into a support area here in the chart if we do pull back. If the buyers can push on through, well then just keep in mind, as we push up in here, we'll be stretching that rubber band really tight and that opportunity for a substantial pullback then increases. Then if we take a look at our uh, T2107, now T2107 percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average, we continue to lag behind here.
And yesterday we found this little bit of price resistance right in here and pulled back ever so slightly, but it's not a big problem. There is a support level right through here and we may just bounce right off of that and push right back on higher here. 38% of the stocks above their 200 day moving average, uh, moving a lot slower than the rest of the indexes because again, we don't have the influences of the Magnificent Seven here in, um, in, in the largest index of the market and that is the Russell. Um, so it just shows that um, they're lay there's a lot of stocks lagging behind. Then if we take a look at our T2101, T2101 actually surprised me a little bit yesterday. We continued to see the breadth of the market expanding. And I think, um, again, I talked a lot about that period of time when stocks were in their blackout period and we languished, we struggled with momentum in the market. Well, the bulls have the control here and we're continuing to see that momentum expand to the upside. And um, I think a good deal of that, even on a day like yesterday when so many were pulling back, is we continue to see that corporate buyback or the effect of the corporate buyback uh, continuing to add to that breadth of the market, uh, maintaining that upside momentum here for the period of time. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. Now, our economic calendar is a um, pretty light one today. Um, we've got housing uh, starts a whole bunch of Fed speakers in here, just yakking it up um, here at the end of the week. Um, so a whole bunch of Fed speakers. We got quarterly services survey and a Baker Hughes word count, which probably no one's going to be caring at all about. So this gives us also that opportunity that we can just float up into um, into those resistance areas, possibly break out. Now that's not to say that we stay up there, but gives that opportunity because there's not a whole lot of data to go on. Um, if we take a look at our um, notables here for this morning. I just took a screenshot here because I'm not doing the morning blog. It's a no blog Friday. And you can see we've got uh, BJ's, we've got the buckle, SPB and TWST. Those are the notables for this morning to be keeping an eye on. So, um, and that's all there is today of major notables to be watching for in uh, the earnings calendar today. So pretty light on both earnings and economic data for today. So with that, um, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. And if you guys could do me that favor before we do that, if you could make sure and take the time to uh, click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon. That way you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and that would be to click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. Um, it is important to me if you notice I, I go through and, and just there are days that I just can't do it. There's just too many things I've got going on that I don't answer those uh, comments. But as a general rule, I answer those comments. And if you have questions, suggestions, please put them in um, that section. And I will seriously consider um, including that in the video if I have the capability of doing so. Um, let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up. Remember everyone, these are not recommendations. You should always do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful, um, uh, making sure that you're following your rules in your risk tolerances. Never blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas, and that definitely includes me. First off, let's take a look here. If we continue to see bonds pulling back, we're going to likely see the dollar weaken, um, weakening here. So if the dollar is going to continue to weaken, we want to really be taking an eye or keeping an eye on stocks in the um, commodity sector. Notice that as the dollar is weakened, we've seen our, uh, this is the mining um, ETF. These are the majors. Um, showing uh, some bullish moves here to the upside, pushing on through. So you might want to keep an eye on GDX. There may be some opportunities here. 
um, coming up if the dollar continues to weaken. And if you look at um, stocks um, within this ETF, there's a lot of stocks showing some pretty good signs, you know, CDE raising, rallying up. So you just go through Royal Gold's coming up and a nice day yesterday. So some of the individual names, um, HMY, look at that one, really moving sharply, AG, AEM, um, all showing some of those bullish uh, things going on, even uh, PAAS um, coming up out of this bottom. So quite a few uh, stocks here in that sector uh, picking up. You might also want to be taking an eye um, to look at um, silver here. Silver made a really nice move breaking through some of this resistance. Now it kind of needs a rest. Um, this is a parabolic move to the upside. So what I'd be looking for is any kind of rest or pullback for an entry. You can see we're trying to stretch out here this morning with a dollar weakening. But any kind of rest or pullback in here would then set up that opportunity to the upside. So keep an eye on silver. You might also um, want to start keeping an eye on some of the junior miners in here. You can see rallying up in some of those juniors um, in that list. Um, starting to show those signs. Some of them not so much yet, but some of them starting to break out of resistance levels here. So a little rest or pullback could set up those opportunities to the upside. So keep an eye on some of those junior miners. Now past that, we should take a look at another commodity here that's been really doing extremely well, uh, and that's uranium. Take a look at CCJ. We've been moving up um, pretty sharply um, for most of this year here in uranium. And um, if you'll notice, this trend um, has uh, extended um, to a, a much more steep upside move. But we had a nice bullish candle come in there yesterday, um, holding on to this support. So a little bit of rest in here, a um, couple of tests of support. Um, on these two candles and now trying to push on higher. Keep an eye on CCJ and honestly anything in that um, sector of the market. Take a look at UEC. UEC also moving up in this beautiful upside trend. Held a little bit of price support. Trying to continue on through here this morning. You can look at UUUU in here. Broke through some resistance in the chart. Notice we popped up in here, pulled back, found some buyers in here yesterday in that possibility that we could continue this upside trend. And then URA and ETF in the sector really stretching up here and a possible breakout coming here in that stock as you can see moving on through hold of support and we're trying to break the um, resistance here in ura as uranium goes up and if the dollar weakens that would help these move on through to the upside let's take a look at a few other things um, um, that may be working here well uh, or not working um, as it were um, if we take a look at XLE, I had suggested the other day that there are some short trades setting up here in XLE, and my goodness, has that played out. Now we're looking at a little bit of a bounce here this morning. There's that shooting star pattern here at the top um, of that downtrend, um, reacting negatively to some price resistance here, and we got moving hard yesterday, trying to bounce back up, but watch, and as long as we're underneath this downtrend, I think there is that chance we continue to progress on through to the downside and you can look at quite a few stocks um, in that area where we failed at resistance and downtrend here in the chart moving on lower and made a lower low in the market we did <clears throat> find a little bit of price support here for a bounce at the end of the day on ExxonMobil but these are some pretty ugly charts at the moment looking uh, awfully bearish um, and even um, as the dollar sells off if the dollar sells off we would expect oil to move higher um, and maybe that is the case if the dollar really weakens but um, overall it's the demand in the market that is driving this and what we're seeing is even though Saudi Arabia Russia and those areas are reducing oil production numbers 
we have plenty of oil uh, because consumers are slowing down. So kind of keep an eye on that. And that's one of those double-edged sword problems that we have. We get all excited when the Fed may pivot and start easing, easing um, um, rates. But it's usually when the Fed starts easing rates is when people are starting to lose their jobs because they have slowed the economy sufficiently. So um, keep an eye on that. We're seeing that demand destruction starting to happen in the market. Take a look at um, some of the travel and um, uh, cruise, for example, here is really, really strong here recently. Uh, CCL breaking through, pushing on it, really extending here. I think this needs a rest, some kind of a consolidation or rest in here to um, continue to move on higher. But keep an eye on CCL, you can on um, RCL doing the same thing, um, really stretching here to the upside. Take a look at Home Depot uh, moving up strongly here and we're getting just this little bit of consolidating rest in here after this big pop in that trade. What I like about it is it's holding above that little bit of a support area. Maybe has to continue to rest here for a while. If this is the trend, then it has to rest there for some period of time. But watch and wait for that next opportunity to the upside could be coming at any time. As you guys know, I've been mentioning McDonald's. Uh, Mickey D's continuing to make that nice move to the upside. We've talked about this this week. There's that first alert on that trade where we pushed up that higher low, and there's a ton of these patterns right now in the market. Look for those stocks coming out of bottom, putting in that higher low, wait for the pop through that resistance area in the chart and then you're off to the races and every potential um, rally up and pullback then sets up that next opportunity the upside and all you have to do is follow that upside trend placing price alerts waiting for the trade to occur so watch that carefully mickey d's looking great here at the moment so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day fantastic results in your trading thank you so much for being here listening uh thanks for the entire week and i will see you guys back here bright and early monday morning take care be safe have a wonderful weekend remember next weekend we've got thanksgiving so it's going to be a light week and it could be a really um, weird week um, and the reason that is is because so many people are expected to travel you can probably expect monday and tuesday to be relatively normal wednesday look for volumes to really drop off into friday um, or into thursday and then friday will be kind of worthless um, uh, because everybody's going to be getting over turkey comas so <laughs> everyone take care have a great weekend and we'll see you back here monday morning wish you all the very best